Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be talking about shooting guest candidates as a wedding photographer. So whatever your style of wedding photography is, whether you shoot more traditional posts or your more relaxed documentary style, either way there'll be points when you'll be shooting guest candidates. So how can we make these guest candidates a little bit more interesting, a little bit more exciting for the couple to look at? I'll give you some advice, so let's get started. So first things first, uh, my advice would be to get high, um, high up, as in up the staircase, on the second level, you know what I mean. So an easy one is to go upstairs, whether it's second floor or there's a staircase, if the venue allows obviously, and shooting down, looking over you know, the whole of the wedding guests and what's going on in the wedding um, reception or even the ceremony. It just sort of adds a completely different angle and just think about your guests. Each one of them is going to have a smartphone most likely and these days smartphones are perfectly capable of taking good photographs. So our job is to deliver something that is, you know, just that little bit different, that little bit more unique. So shooting eye level is fine but not for 100% of the gallery. So the second way would be shooting down low. This is by far my most favourite way of shooting because to me it just adds such a nice layer to the images like more drama and you could be having kids or animals at a wedding and just getting down on their level will open up a whole another world that the bride and groom will not expect to see in their gallery. Generally I do this with a wide lens because for me like when you think about the framing you could have for example a child in the middle and then you could have wedding guests legs and feet sort of all around and it just nicely frames it and yeah i think with a wide lens you just have a little bit more room literally to be creative in these types of angles and when you're down low shooting up i know there's like this preconceived notion that you can't shoot up people's faces like it's going to distort their noses or you know their faces and things like that but generally you're not going to be that close to anybody that's going to start distorting their face unless you are using like really wide and like 14 mil lens or something but even then you know it depends how you compose the image so don't be afraid to get down low look up and just get a completely different perspective on the wedding so sort of similar following to shooting low is getting really close and i know this might not be comfortable for many of us and for me as well like i need to overcome this fear of am i too close to the wedding guest am i too close to the bride and groom but I do choose to shoot quite wide in terms of my lens. So yes, I do need to get quite close to get in, in the action. And when you get so close, um, it's, again, especially with a wide lens, you make the bride and groom, or bride and bride or groom and groom, looking at the gallery, feel like they're part of this action and it just looks so much more dynamic than shooting a really flat image from very far away and just you know looking more like an observer and again that's fine most of my shots are um, me observing but sometimes you do need to jump in the action and get really close and capture all the dynamic and you know all the emotions that are happening at the time so obviously it's not about poking people's faces with your camera it's just about recognizing that moments about to happen and just you know being ready to jump in and capture it so the next way to make your guest candidates a little bit more interesting would be to create layers in your composition. So what I mean is, when there's something going on, for example in the foreground and background, don't always go for the really simple, straightforward compositions. For example, there could be guests in the background, guests in the foreground, and choose a focal point that just makes the image a little bit more unique. And you know, when you think about your gallery, think about it as reading as sentences. When you're reading, you need time to stop, you need time to take a breath to continue. So the same is with the gallery. You don't want all your images to be so similar that, you know, your bride and groom or bride and bride or groom and groom don't even take a moment to stop and, you know, appreciate what's in front of them. So having some of these little bit more unique compositions where you create a scene just makes the, makes the couple stop and just take a minute to observe and, you know, look at the image, what's going on, etc. and then continue with the rest of the gallery. 
And even if some of the shots, the guests aren't in focus, don't worry about it too much because, you know, the, your couple will still recognise who's in the picture and don't worry about chopping heads off or legs off and feet off and things like that. Just think about having some of these a little bit more interesting shots, you know, throughout the gallery to break it up in little chunks. And another favourite of mine is shooting the guests in sort of an isolation. So what I mean is, you know, your, your couple is used to seeing their family and friends in everyday situations. They're used to seeing them smiling for the camera, you know, doing some fun group shots, things like that, doing selfies. But what they're not used to seeing is, is having their friends or family members in a really beautifully composed, sort of like a landscape, almost a landscape image. And you can include obviously the grounds of the venue, it could be also inside, things like that, and just focus on one or two people. And to me, like just having that one person in the image will add a little bit more scale and dimension to the image as opposed to just shooting a like a still life image of the venue or still life image of the room. There's only so many images you can take of guests raising a glass or guests taking selfies and chatting to one another and yes there will be moments of really low energy throughout the wedding because you know the energy levels in weddings go in waves it's not going from low to high it always goes kind of yeah I think it goes in waves you know starting from the morning and all the way through the night and just having these few dynamic interesting compositions in your guests kind of gallery will make it more exciting for your couple to look through the gallery. And you don't even need to resort to using things like prisms and filters or um, double exposure and things like that to make you more exciting to look at. All you need to do is just take a really simple situation, think to yourself, how can I make this more dynamic? Should I go low? Should I go high? Should I get in close? Or maybe should I go all the way back and get a like, nice isolated image of one person in the garden, in the field or whatever? And to me, that's what makes each wedding quite interesting. Because end of the day, I mean, it might seem that weddings are a lot of fun and you know there's so much going on. And yes, there can be, but the sort of low times of guests just chatting is quite similar from wedding to wedding to wedding. And I find I enjoy looking for all these different compositions just to make it more interesting for myself as well and to keep myself going throughout the day. So I would love to hear if you enjoy shooting guest candies and I don't think there's that many of us who do but if you do please let me know in the comments below and let me know your favourite methods of sort of making more exciting for yourself and for your couple to be looking at the gallery. And if you did find this useful, hopefully you did, please hit like and obviously if you haven't subscribed yet please do so and it'll just make it clear for me that you know I should continue with making these little tips and tricks videos. So if you did enjoy this, hopefully I'll see you again next time soon.